welcome, welcome back to my channel. So for those of you who don't know me, I study history at the University of East Anglia, also known as UVA. And that is exactly what this video is going to be about. What is history like at UVA? So before I start, I just want to say that this video is going to be a combination of factual information and opinion. Obviously, the factual information is true as of the time of publication of this video. But if you're watching a few years down the line, then just make sure to go to the UVA website and just check that information. So I'm going to start off by talking about modules. Now, when I was in first year, I had six modules, they were all compulsory. You may have changed that for this year, so you can now choose two of the modules that you want to do in your first year. Now, the main difference between history at university and history at A-level or even GCSE is that history at university is really much a surface level. So to give you an example, I am currently studying a module on modern Germany in my second year. And at A-level, I studied the German Democratic Republic literally for a whole year. This literally only covers one week in my module for my university degree. So when you hear this, it may feel like you're even going backwards once you get to university. This is not the case. Basically, they just want to give you a really broad overview so that you know what you then enjoy. And it's then up to you to go and research what you enjoy in real depth. Therefore, I'd advise being really selective with your time. You know, obviously do all of your prep work for seminars and things because Otherwise, you're literally putting yourself at a disadvantage. But if there's something that you really enjoy, then go ahead and research that in real depth and just put more of your time into that than other things. So I guess what I'm getting at is just don't be surprised at how independent university is. You're not gonna be spoon fed information about events or anything like that. And it's up to you to then go and research further. The library is really well stocked and it's really good for research. But the very best piece of advice I can give you is just to go into your course really open-minded. So to give you an example, I hated medieval history before I started at UEA, but by the end of the year, I actually really enjoyed that module. Early modern history in my first semester was definitely not my favourite part of the year, but I stayed open-minded, I did the prep work, I went to the seminars, and I found that I really enjoyed the one week we did on slavery. I then decided to do an essay on this at the end of the module, and that's really impacted my decision to take a module on slavery my second year as well. Honestly, I cannot recommend that module enough, it is fantastic. When I thought about doing this video, I spoke to my friend Izzy, who's on my course as well, and one thing that she definitely agrees is that the choice of modules for second and third year is just absolutely huge. And even in first year, the time span that you cover is really, really good. And it just gives you a lot of information about different periods of history, and it gives you the chance to study things you haven't studied before. So I'm gonna move on to how the course is actually structured and taught at UVA. So in my first year, I had six modules, and all of them were a combination of lectures and seminars. This will be the case throughout your whole university degree. In my first year, for all six of my modules, I had one hour's worth of seminar and two hours worth of lectures. In second year, this is slightly different, so I have two hours worth of seminars and one hour's worth of lectures. But essentially, you're gonna have lectures and you're gonna have seminars. In short, for history, there are not many contact hours, but this is because, as I said, it's up to you to then go and research what you want to in depth. So before a seminar, you will be given prep work to do. This is usually in the form of a book chapter or a journal article and then some primary sources. Even if you have the best memory, I would still advise that when you do your prep work, take notes and take note of page numbers as well. This is because you can actually use a lot of your prep work in future essays and assignments. And so if you've already taken down the notes and the page number, then you've already done a lot of the work for yourself later on. If I could give you one piece of advice for seminars, it would just be to make the most of them and participate. Personally, I always find that things stick in my mind better once I've spoken about them rather than just thinking or reading about them. Seminars are literally designed for debate, so just participate as much as you can. At the end of the day, you're literally paying £9,000 a year for the privilege of sitting in that room. So just make sure that you speak. It can always be really awkward as well when people don't speak in seminars. I personally find seminars the most useful part of the teaching at degree level. So lectures. Now different lecturers will have different lecture styles. So some will just talk to you, some will show you videos or photos on a PowerPoint. It just depends on what they like to do. I know a lot of university students will advise that you look at the PowerPoint or presentation or whatever before the lecture. Personally for history, I don't actually do this. Sometimes the PowerPoint is literally just photos, in which case you can't get much information from that anyway. Now, in your assignments, you will not get away with using Google or Wikipedia, but you will get the lecture schedule sent to you before you actually start the lectures. So I tend to just take 10 minutes before I leave for a lecture just to Google what that lecture is about. 
because in the lectures they're not going to spend time actually going through the events and dates and things like that they're going to go through things like the debate around that subject you know if the lecture's on the first world war then they're not going to take you through exactly what happened and the date so just make sure you've done that beforehand if you've already done this beforehand then you'll spend a lot more time actually understanding what the lecture is talking about rather than frantically trying to piece things together to understand what's going on in an ideal world you'd want to be going to the library looking at academic work journals things like that to get this information but we don't always have time for that and if you just want to know what's happened factual information a quick google search is absolutely fine just to do that if you want to be really safe then you'll be given a reading list at the start of each module there are really general textbooks on there that you can use for this as well one thing i will definitely say is that for first years if you're in a lecture and you don't have a clue what that big word meant that the lecturer just used I can almost assure you that the rest of the lecture theatre won't have known either. There's definitely a big difference in language used by lecturers at university compared to what your A-level teacher would have used with you. So you will get used to this once you start reading academic work, but don't be really overwhelmed by it in your first couple of weeks. So in terms of assessment, UVA uses formative and summative assessments to see where you are. Now until I actually started my course, I wasn't even aware that my first year didn't even count towards my end degree grade. Now this may seem a bit mad, but there is logic to it. It gives you the chance to make mistakes and learn from them. I did not do this enough in my first year and it's something that I really regret. It's something that I've mentioned in one of my past videos and I wish I'd have let myself fail more often. Yes, it's really good to get good grades and it feels amazing when you get a good grade back but I still feel like my essay writing hasn't really progressed much from what I did at A-level because I kind of stayed to the same structures and things. Whereas if I'd have tried something different, then I'd have known whether that would have done well or whether it was worse than what I already knew. Your formative assessments will tend to be something that will then help your summative later on. So submitting a bibliography or an essay plan, something like that. So some of your modules will be coursework based, some of them will be coursework and exam based. If they are coursework based, then most likely your summatives will be essays, but they could be other things as well, like book reviews or film reviews. At university, you get to choose your essay titles, which I really, really like. You can also make up your own essay title, which I've never been confident enough to do, but some people do and they do really well. So I'm sure if you studied A-levels, then you'll be accustomed to this already, but at degree level at history, you will need a really firm argument. You'll need to show this in your introduction and your conclusion. So really get used to doing that in your A-level essays. You'll need to read around your chosen subject through academic literature. You'll also need to show the historiography. Historiography is basically the debates and things that other historians have said about that topic. So you'll be given your assessment dates and in first year your essay titles right at the start of the year. Definitely make use of all this time you have and don't leave anything to the last minute. Something in first year that I found quite difficult was that I kind of expected people to tell me when to start doing essays. This won't happen. So if you feel like it's time to start an essay and you feel ready enough to do it, then just go ahead and start reading. This way, even if you change your mind on that essay title you've chosen, then you've got time to read for something else. You know, just bear in mind that the thing you might be writing about may not come up in a lecture and the seminar schedule until like week 10 or 11 and then the essay needs to be in in week 12 and you're going to need more than a week to write these essays. In any case, it really won't hurt to do extra reading before this topic comes up in the lecture and the seminar schedule. At some point, I do plan on doing a video on how to write an essay. I'll use an example of one that got me a first in my first year. Assignments at university are definitely manageable. You'll have loads and loads of time to do them, especially in first year. And I feel like in first year, it's definitely easier to get a good grade for a degree essay than what it was at A-level. Personally, I'd advise not to choose an essay on something you've already studied. I genuinely think you can end up doing worse. For example, you could forget to cite information that you just know because if you've read something new, you've got all of the information written there with page numbers. Whereas if you're writing an essay on something you already know about, then you can write something in your essay that needs citing and you don't know where to get it from because it was just in your head already. Finally, I'll just say a short few words about the teaching staff at UVA. I can honestly say that the teaching staff have been fantastic. One of the very first things I noticed on my applicant day was how enthusiastic they are and how you could tell they genuinely love their subject. During my first year, I can honestly say that there wasn't one instance where a member of teaching staff didn't help me when I needed help. This is really one of the main reasons that I chose UVA over other universities. So obviously your choice of university is really individual and it's really up to you to decide where you want to go. But if you were thinking about UEA, then I hope this video has been really helpful to you. As always, if it has been helpful, then don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe.